Hey everyone, Meltingman234 here, and welcome to another Forgotten Media Halloween special, where I dig up some stuff beyond the grave. <laughs> and what better way to bring up some scares is by playing a Tiger Electronic game. Yeah, those old cheap LCD games from the 90s that suddenly came back in recent years. Yeah, they felt like re-releasing that Sonic 3 and Disney's Little Mermaid one. Back in 2015, I covered the Nightmare Before Christmas Tiger Electronic game as a Christmas special, so I figured it was fitting to do one for Halloween. And this time, it's the Crash Bandicoot Tiger Electronic game. That's right, not even the Bandicoot could escape from this craze from back in the day. Whenever they would make a Tiger version of an already made video game like Sonic 3, Mega Man, or Double Dragon, there were always poor adaptations, with its limited graphics and the fact that the background never changes. But the Crash Bandicoot one is very unique because, rather than just do a cheap adaptation of the first game, they decided to do their own thing with it. It was first released as part of Tiger Electronics 99X game series in 1998, hence why fans usually refer to this as Crash Bandicoot 99X. In this game, Crash hears about some treasure hidden in a mansion that is heavily guarded by some ghouls and creatures, as the treasure was once belonged to a greedy old man named Mr. Crumb. So he decides to venture forth into the mansion and find the treasure. Along the way, he encounters very creepy enemies like a tree monster named Thornthing, a mummy named Grumbler, a skeleton with horns named Digger, and finally the ghost of Mr. Crumb himself. Despite the small size, the 99X was a slight update in the graphics, having various poses and digitized sound. But I don't have that thing because of how extremely rare they are, so instead we'll be looking at the LCD version. Yeah, a more standard Tiger Electronic version of the game. As you can see, the design is different from the more classic Tiger Electronic handheld design. Here it looks more like a mutated letter D. For controls, we can move Crash left and right, we can also jump, and do his spin attack. We also have buttons that can turn on or turn off the game, a high score button, a reset button, and finally a sound button, which thankfully there is a sound button, which I'll explain later on. Nothing fancy on the back, it is missing the cover for the batteries as it came like that when I got it off of eBay. There's also a manual that comes with the packaging, and unlike the one for Nightmare Before Christmas that was just a piece of paper telling you how to play the game, this one is designed more like a proper instruction manual from back in the day, providing short explanations on the story, gameplay, controls, and telling you what kind of enemies and items you'll encounter. I find it funny that despite them ripping artwork from Crash Bandicoot 2, there's never a segment in the game that involves Crash using his jetpack. <laughs> The descriptions show that the story is pretty much the same as the 99X version. The only difference is that Mr. Crumb's goons are not here, and the main baddie instead is Mr. Cruel. Which is weird because in the manual they still call him Mr. Crumb. I wonder if that was some kind of spelling error or something, but eventually we did get some clarity. According to George Fergan, one of the developers of Crash Bandicoot 99X, the team was divided on the name and the character of the main bad guy. Some wanted him to be a ghostly spirit, and others wanted him to be a floating scarecrow head. So they ended up getting both of their wishes by doing these two different versions. The 99X version had the ghostly specter, and the LCD version gave us the floating scarecrow head. One weird thing about this handheld is that the specific batteries that it needs to work. I tried using Energizer batteries at first, and I got the sound, but the screen wouldn't work. Turns out the recommendation is Duracell batteries, which I assume also applies to other Tiger Electronic games. Well, at least it's a common battery that you can find anywhere, and not something obscure like those Toys R Us branded batteries. <laughs> Now, unlike the Nightmare Before Christmas one, where it was just a handheld constantly making bleeps and bloops, this one has bleeps and bloops, and there's actual music in this one. And, well, uh... Yeah, it's terrible. So instead, I'm just gonna play the game on mute while I play some spooky music in the background. The game has three stages with three acts each, all showing Crash Bandicoot running down a pathway taking place in a cemetery. The main goal is collecting six keys in order to fight Mr. Cruel and get the treasure. In the first act, your main enemies are snakes and bats that run around, as well as a piranha plant that appears on the right side of the screen. Hit them to score points, but getting hit by them makes you lose points. 
So, how do you get the key? Well, you gotta score at least 1,000 points to make it appear before the timer runs out. Once you have the points, then the key will appear, and you have to jump and get it, and you really gotta pay attention to when it appears, because the graphics for it is very tiny. I think the manual says it usually appears when the timer is close to 20 seconds or something. But yeah, sometimes you'll just be ranking up points and be lucky to get the key, and other times you already have points ranked up, and then you'll just have to wait a while until it actually appears. So yeah, rank up the points and get ready to jump for that key. Act 2 is pretty easy. The only enemies you have to encounter are ghosts on the left side of the screen, and open graves. Although to me, they look more like open caskets. This is where you'll mostly learn on how the crates work in this game. There's Wampa Fruit crates that give you points, the classic question mark crate that either gives you points or an Aku Aku mask, and then there's the Nitro crates that take away points if you break it open. I usually keep running into that stupid thing and don't have enough time to get away from it. <laughs> There's also tombstones, which are basically crates with crosses on top. Avoid those, or else you're going to lose points by crashing into them. Act 3 is again the open graves and ghosts, except now they're carrying pitchforks. And finally, rats that pretty much act like snakes when they scamper around the place. After that, it's pretty much just the same old thing for the rest of the levels. The only difference is that the levels speed up a bit, and the enemy attacks become much faster. You'd think that the crash head icons on the top would be representing your lives, but no, they represent the stages that you're on. I think the only time you can lose in this game is if you don't have enough keys to enter the final boss, or if you lose to Mr. Cruel himself. And speaking of which, here's the final boss going up against the floating sack of hay. You gotta time your spin attack just right to hit him, and you also need to keep track of your scoreboard and timer. If any of those go down to zero, then the game's over. But once you manage to knock him around a couple of times, then the treasure is yours. Yay, Crash is now rich. So, maybe now he can take Ton out on a fancy dinner date or something. <laughs> And that concludes the Crash Bandicoot Tiger Electronic game. In terms of its concept of Crash Bandicoot going up against the supernatural, it's very unique. But in terms of gameplay, it just makes you wish that this was a game that wasn't on the Tiger Electronic handheld. I mean the controls are fine, the buttons to move Crash around is definitely better than that weird D-pad I had to deal with on the Nightmare Before Christmas one. But either way, it's just a really low budget version of an already low budget handheld. <laughs> While the original Crash 99X game is very rare, this LCD version does pop up on eBay and Amazon from time to time. But good luck trying to find it for a decent price. I highly recommend this for hardcore Crash Bandicoot fans, or if you're a collector of the Tiger Electronic devices. While Crash Bandicoot 99X is a thing of the past, this wasn't the end for Mr. Crumb and his goons, where there was a sudden new interest for these characters from the fanbase. I think this happened after the Winter Festival Grand Prix event happened in Crash Team Racing Nitro Field. Since that update brought back some of the more obscure characters like Rillaroo and Yaya Panda, the fans became more interested in what other obscure characters could be given new life. Which led to the rediscovering of Mr. Crumb, as well as people making fan art on how they think he might look like if he was featured in a new Crash game. Heck, even I joined in when I did a quick doodle on how I would redesign the character. Well, he wasn't featured in Nitro Fuel, but he was present in the mobile phone game Crash on the Run. I was really excited when they announced that they would be bringing back Mr. Crumb, and I really dig the new look that he has, being all fancy, spooky, and goofy at the same time. Like, seriously, look at how long that tongue is. <laughs> They also brought back one of his minions, Thorn Thing, as a reoccurring enemy you encounter in the game. And in a recent Halloween event, Grumbler also made his return. Perhaps one day they'll bring back Digger and maybe even Mr. Cruel, and then these spooky creatures of the night will all finally be reunited once again. Well, that wraps up this episode of Forgotten Media, so this is Veltman234 signing out and wishing everyone a happy and safe Halloween! <laughs>